Welcome Protege. Just to do a quick recap, in the last tutorial we showed you how to change the data type of your variables since the default data type in MATLAB is, is type double. In this tutorial we'll show you a concept called casting which essentially means you temporarily change the data type of your variable to match another variable. For example, if you have a uint8 variable and cast it to a uint16 data type, it will pad zeros to the upper byte. This can be confusing at first, but we'll walk you through it. First, I'm going to create a variable called x, and this will be a uint16 data type. And if you're not sure how to change the data type of variables, be sure to watch tutorial 7 before you continue. Next, I'm going to create two variables, y and z, of data type un8. So notice that x is un16, y is un8, and z is also un8. I'm just going to try to do a simple addition of these two variables. And as a result, we do get the right output, but notice that the data type of x changed to the data type of these two variables. So we so before we had it as a uint16, but now it's a uint8. You're wondering, well, I want to keep x as a uint16 because I'm going to keep adding more numbers to it so it's going to become very large. And as a result, the uint8 data type won't be able to store this large number. So how do we fix that? That's where casting comes in. And to do that, you simply cast your y and z variables to from uint8 to uint16. And now notice that x is still a uint16 data type. But with casting, notice that y and z are still uint8 data types. And this is what casting is. It, won't, it just temporarily changes the data type of your variable. It won't permanently change it. I'll show you another example with multiplication. And I'm going to change, initialize x back to 0 and change the values of y and z, but still keep the same un8 data type. So I initialize x back to 0 and y and z have values 255 and 255. And again if we just try to do y times z without any casting, x becomes the data type of the two factors that you multiplied and since it's a u8 int variable it's not able to store the resulting product of 255 times 255 which is not 255 and again to fix that we cast the variables y and z to u16 data types just change the addition to multiplication here and we get the correct product and it's still a uint16 data type. So what happens if the factors you're multiplying by are different data types, say y was uint8 but z is still uint16? I'll show you that. Go ahead and change or keep y at uint8 but change z to uint16. and then try to do this multiplication again Oops. just the multiplication of y and z without casting first and we get an error here and to fix that again you would do casting we either want to cast y to a uint16 data type or cast z to a uint 8 data type.
but performing the latter might not always work because if this value was bigger, say 300, Z can only hold up to a value of 255, so if you try to cast it to a UN8, then you'll get the wrong answer. So I'm going to cast Y to a UN16 data type to match that of Z. And we get the correct answer and data type of UN16. Next I'll give you an example of, on casting matrices. In the last tutorial, I forgot to mention that you can also change the data type of matrices, not just scalars. I'm going to create two matrices M and N. M will be of data type UN8. And N will, uh, will be of data type UN16. And notice that M is UN8 and N is UN16. If we try to add these two matrices, it will return an error. since the data types aren't the same. So again, to fix that, you want to cast M to a UNT16 data type. And it returns the resulting matrix of UNT16. And again, notice that we casted M to a UNT16 matrix, but it still stays as a UNT8 data type to be used for future use. To do a quick recap, we covered how to cast variables and matrices to be able to perform an operation such as addition and multiplication. And we only went over how to cast a UN8 data type to UN16, but you can cast variables or matrices to just about any data type that you need. For example, you can cast a char to a double, an int 8 to an int 64, but just be careful when, say, you're casting an int 8 to a uint 8. So, for example, if we declare x as an int 8 that holds a value of negative 2 and try to cast it as a uint 8, it will cast it as 0 since unsigned integers can't hold negative numbers. That's it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe below or leave a question or comment.